What's going on everybody, LK here, back at it again with another video. And today, uh, some more Dragon Ball for you all. And uh, I've been thinking about this a lot recently, about how much the game has changed since Season 1. And one of the absolute biggest things here, and you can kind of tell by the assists I have, are the prevalence of theme assists. So first off, y'all really need to understand how much Prince Vegeta himself, Super Saiyan Vegeta, ran the game when Dragon Ball Fighters came out. This assist was pretty much unquestionably one of the best assists in the game. I was a little small brain in this case. I was like, it's not that big of a deal because I was playing Trunks and Trunks, you know, he had changed the future. It was all good. I could just go through it. And I was playing Trunks on point at that time. So I really didn't care about the assist, but basically everyone else had real, real, real major problems dealing with this assist to the point that they patched it like pretty early within a couple months. It had mad block stun. It covers the screen. We already, I've talked about assist many times. You know, it protects the screen. He's hard to hit because he comes from above. There's all these really good things about it. Really easy to extend combos. There's a million good things about this assist. So the change they made to this assist that lowered Vegeta's stock in the scope of the whole scene is that it became uh, reflectable from block stun. So when the game came out, you could not do this. When you blocked Vegeta's assist, that was it. Like, shot, that was it. So people kind of had mixed feelings about this. So it was still, and I think even now, it's still one of the best assists in the game for neutral. Early on in the game, people, you know, were trying to figure out the game, figure out how to do mix-ups and stuff. And it was pretty much agreed upon, not by everybody, but it became much harder to do mix-ups with this assist because they can reflect in block stuff. This is starting uh, kind of where Goku starts to appear. So what do people actually misunderstand about Vegeta first? So the main thing comes from this. Despite reflecting, I still have the advantage. So you can't do like normal stuff and they can kind of dice roll you a little bit out of the block zone, but no matter what, you're safe, you have the advantage, you get to enforce your turn, and you get to use Vegeta in really creative ways on offense that isn't as straightforward as like call assist, jump, do high-low, call assist, do airborne move, go high-low, and stuff like that. But that took a little while for people to figure out. Like people weren't really doing kind of like more advanced Vegeta offense like this, for example, for about like six months to a year. So this brings us truly to SSJ Goku now. So SSJ Goku and Beams in general appears from pretty safe spot on the screen. So he, he appears where you are, but it goes full screen. So when you're full screen, there's nothing to be scared of. Like I can stand like here and he will show up. It goes full screen, and you can't reflect it in block stun. So despite it having less, and uh, in the case of Vegeta, significantly less block stun than Vegeta, it still was pretty functional block stun for most characters. One of the early players we saw actually running SSJ Goku was uh, Dogu. Now, on the US side of it all, we were mostly like, you know, the character has no mix-ups, uh, there's Vegeta, so why would you need to play SSJ Goku? But as time went on, especially after Evo, after that first Dragon Ball Evo, that's when you really started to see more people pick up SSJ. So let's, let's talk about what this beam actually does for characters. So this beam does a lot and uh, the, one of the best ways I can describe it is that having a beam assist for many characters really, really, really enables it. A lot of characters in this game are made so that they're like 80 or 70% complete. And they usually have weaknesses that you need assists to help you with. So, I mean, Base Vegeta is a pretty strong character on his own, in his own regard. But with a beam, he gets away with a lot of nonsense, a lot of screen control. For example, this move is well and good, but alone, it's like, okay, you did that. Okay, like, what does this do? But when you combine this with a beam, all of a sudden, you have jump height and ground control just gone. It's two huge red lines just control. Beam assists do this for many, many, many characters. As another example, I actually played Majin Buu last year, right? One of the things I quickly discovered about Majin Buu is that he really benefits from being enabled and beams actually let him do a lot of nonsense in neutral too. You get a lot of implied control because when you press that beam, don't forget, the whole ground is immediately covered. So a lot of characters who usually have like, oh, they don't cover this area or they move this way, but there's like this huge dead zone here, you can use a beam to cover. A lot of people started picking up SSJ Goku as they found that SSJ Goku just helped their team. 
Piccolo players, Piccolo Goku are all familiar with, Ginyu, SSJ Goku. The one thing we didn't see at that period was Gotenks Goku, Gotenks SSJ Goku, not that great, but it basically turned at season one, the end of season one, it turned into two things. It turned into either you're doing something and SSJ Goku and like whatever third character, or you're going the path of darkness and playing Adoko Han Yamcha show. This starts the beginning of what actually happens in season two. So because it's kind of split 50-50, people are starting to play SJ Goku a lot. And what you see at the end of season one, especially for people running like the Bardock SJ Goku show, is that especially at the World Tour Finals, you see a lot of SSJ Goku tech that people are not really aware of. Now, this actually carries from season one to season two. So this is something I've only touched on a little bit, but uh, we went from like, basically most people agreeing that SJ Goku is probably around like A plus tier and really good to by season two, most people are hanging him around like S minus or so. What was the main thing that happened? It's not just the beam. Of course it is the beam and how people use the beam, the characters that get better when you have a beam assist, but also low key, because there were two main Kamehameha assists, right? There's SJ Goku and there's Goku Black. But the thing about SJ Goku is that more people played SSJ Goku. So you have this thing, and this happened with GT as well. A lot of people are playing a character that's good, they're gonna find more and more things, and they're gonna push and push and push and push that character. So that was one of the big things about GT in season two, and SSJ Goku in season two. Uh, that's the thing about Bardock since forever, Kibu. Anytime they make changes to these characters, these characters are really common and popular. So people just find stuff. So Goku basically went from like, why would you play him in season one to being on many, many, many teams in season two, especially after Gotenks games. So then last, that brings us to the last step, right? And you can see it, it's GT. So the one main thing about uh, Beams versus Vegeta is that Vegeta covers that 45 degree angle that's ex exceptionally, exceptionally strong in this game. Of course, Beams covers the whole ground, and right? very strong, but how much that matters also depends on what the point character can do. So there are times where, you know, like, your point character might not have stuff that will help you cover so much, but the beam at least helps them cover the ground. So GT was like that last, last, last step. GT has a 45 degree angle-ish of his own by going up like this. So the combination of the two really empowers certain characters. By the time we get to GT, uh, for the most part people, some people actually call 30 block stun, 30 frames block stun. Uh, block stun assist for mix ups. I don't personally do, um, but some people out there do. That goes to show you how far we've come from how much block stun you actually need to do mix ups. Because Vegeta, SSJ Vegeta, if I recall correctly, is something like 60 frames of block stun or something. I could be off. The beams are half that, but at this point, people are like, oh yeah, like beams are more than enough to do mix ups with almost all characters. So we come through this full circle of from people saying Goku doesn't have mix ups and, you know, Vegeta running the game to. Now you have multiple options for beams and angles to totally enable like certain characters' play styles and also shut down how people play the game. Now hopefully that makes sense. Of course, now we're like, yeah, duh, beams are really good. Uh, personally, I've rated beams to be overall the best type of assist in the game. They give characters beams as like buffs, especially as we've seen in season three. Like Trunks has a beam assist now, Yamcha has a beam assist now. Some characters have beam assist on their seat assist now as well. Um, but at the beginning, it wasn't quite uh, like this. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments or just feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. Like and subscribe if you feel like it and I'll see you next time.